I did a video a couple of weeks ago called Tips for Buying a Motorcycle. In that video, we discussed finding the right motorcycle for the type of riding that you want to do and getting the proper size and weight ratio for the skill of the rider. I saw in the comments on YouTube, Facebook, and the Rumble platform that many of the comments had the same theme. So let's discuss some of the comments that I saw and in general, we'll discuss when is the right time to move up to a bigger motorcycle. This week on MC Rider. <laughs> That's kind of just weird, isn't it? Let's do it this way. This week on MC Rider, let's talk about it. That's a little better. A lot of riders say they move progressively up through size and weight of their motorcycles. And if that works for you and that's what you choose to do, I have no real problem with that. It could be a good strategy, but I don't necessarily think that you have to start on a 250 CC, then move up to a 500 or 750 and then move up to a leader bike. I think you can start on a manageable motorcycle and start and learn your proper technique on that smaller motorcycle. And once you've got the proper technique down, then you'll be able to move up to just about any motorcycle that you choose to ride after that. Now, I'm always hesitant to talk in absolutes when I'm discussing this subject because every rider is different. You know, some riders progress quicker, some riders develop their skills quicker, and some riders are much, much slower in developing their riding skills. And even when it comes to picking a good starting motorcycle, there are a lot of variables that come into play. A Honda Rebel for a rider my size would be a first, you know, a good first option, possible bike to choose from. But it wouldn't be a great option if you're six foot six and 350 pounds. But there is one thing that's true if you follow this plan of getting a smaller motorcycle and moving up in size once you feel comfortable, you have to use that time on the smaller bike to develop good technique. So a common comment that I've seen in the videos of the past is riders say that they started small, but when they got their larger motorcycle, they frequently dropped it. Well, the reason for this is you rode with bad habits on the smaller motorcycle and with bad technique, and you simply carry that bad technique with you to the larger motorcycle. You know, having a smaller bike is not a magic bullet. You've got to practice and you got to develop good technique. The larger the motorcycle is, the less forgiving it's going to be of bad technique and over you're going to go if you carry that bad technique with you. But I want to dispel some bad information that many riders get when they start riding and it's this, just get some seat time and you'll be fine. You know, I hear that advice a lot to new riders. Understand that when you're riding, you're just riding and when you're training, you're truly developing your skills. So even if you ride to and from work every day on a motorcycle, how often in a year are you emergency braking out on the street? You know, I ride in one of the heaviest traffic areas in the world here in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And I commuted every day about 25 miles each way on a motorcycle when I worked for the airlines. Because I use good road strategy while I was out, I can count on one hand the number of times that I had to use emergency braking or swerve on a motorcycle out on the street in all those years of riding back and forth to the airport. Now, I don't know what that number would be, but let's say for the sake of argument, let's say I used evasive maneuvers five times commuting on a motorcycle when I worked for the airlines over that 10 year period. But I can practice evasive maneuvers five times in about a minute out on a parking lot. So when it comes to just getting seat time to build your skills, 10 years of riding equals about one minute of actual training time. Well, it may not be totally accurate, but you kind of get the picture. Another thing that training does is it highlights your deficiencies as a rider. Stopping a motorcycle nice and easy at a stoplight is not the same thing as stopping a motorcycle in an emergency. Here are just a few of the things that you might get away with stopping at a stop sign that would probably cost you stopping in an emergency. Looking down instead of keeping your head and eyes up. Using too much front brake. Using too much rear brake. Grabbing or slamming on either brake. Not keeping the handlebars square when you come to a stop. So if those handlebars are slightly turned or not having the bike in the proper gear when it comes to a stop. So riding is not training, training is training and it highlights our deficiencies as riders. 
What you do with those deficiencies is what determines how well you will do when you move up to that larger motorcycle. Many riders start on a 250cc motorcycle and they just get seat time to build their riding skills. They practice maybe once or twice with emergency braking and they've got the handlebars slightly turned when they come to the stop. Motorcycle wants to lean left or right as a result, but because it's a small motorcycle, it's not a big deal. Lightweight of the motorcycle, they just use some leg power to get that bike back up to the balance, but they never correct their riding deficiency. That same rider a year later buys their dream motorcycle and performs that same stop out on the large touring motorcycle, and they're picking the motorcycle up off the ground because the heavier motorcycle is less forgiving of bad technique. A bigger motorcycle will always be less forgiving of poor technique than a smaller motorcycle, and it does you very little good if you start on a small motorcycle, but you do not put yourself in a position to develop your technique. The only way you can really do that is with dedicated practice and training time. Time spent riding has value too, but riding is riding and practice is practice. Go to mcrider.com skills and I've got a page of core riding skills that every rider should develop. The time to develop these skills is when you're first starting out and then you continue to you know, reinforce them as your riding career moves along. But even if you've got a larger bike already and your skills are deficient, you can get out on a parking lot and you can work on these fundamentals and break those bad habits and bad techniques that cost you money and skin out on the road. It's just the larger the motorcycle on, the slower you're going to need to wade or ease into it because that bigger bike is going to be a lot less forgiving. So I hope this helps you out. The best way to practice these techniques is to be a member and get access to the field guide. But till then, you can get access to a lot of the same videos at mcrider.com skills. And until next week, guys, it's Kevin with MC Rider, and I'll see you on the road.